Hey, how's it going? My name's Eric. My name's Eric, and we're going to show you what we came up with for our snow blower up here in Idaho. I actually live in Texas, but my father in law over here in snow country uh, wanted a little something more powerful to move some snow other than the walk behind. He's got about five acres, and we added this shop recently, so a little. A little bit uh, more snow to, to blow, so we got him a tractor, and uh, this is a Branson 4520C with the cab. It's a 47 horsepower uh, standard shuttle shift, and we've got a Vernig V50 skid steer snow blower on the front here, which is a beast. It's six feet wide. Problem with this is trying to figure out how to power this because obviously these tractors don't have near the uh, flow rate that you need to power a snowblower so maybe a lot of you other guys out there are having the same issue how can I get a snowblower on the front of my tractor where I don't have to back up so you're gonna have to find a skid steer snowblower and you're gonna have to figure out how to power it so this is what we've engineered back here you can buy something similar to this from a couple of different companies that I have no dealings with, or you can attempt to make one yourself like what we did. Uh, so obviously what you're gonna need is at least a 25 gallon or 30 gallon reservoir tank for your hydraulic fluid. You're gonna need a filter. And you can buy all this from Surplus Center uh, and other companies that will come with the filter, with your uh, you know gauge here to show you how much uh, hydraulic fluid you got in there and then when you're moving that much hydraulic fluid because that snow snow blower is a 25 gallon uh, per minute flow rate you're gonna need something to cool that oil down so we also added an oil cooler which kicks on when the temperature gets high and shuts off when it uh, when it's cooled down we've got that uh, piped in here to our uh, power that goes with the tractor and most all these tractors, especially these Korean tractors, that's a European trailer hitch mount there. So you won't find this anywhere around. You'll have to order that from probably Amazon, but it's just gonna be a European trailer hitch. Why they do that on these tractors that they sell in the United States, I don't know. You'd think that it's gonna be a, like a regular six prong or um, something like that, but it's not. So then you got the complexities of figuring out how are you going to get your pressure and your flow going through this tank and sending it to the snowblower? Because that snowblower requires pretty high pressure and pretty high flow. You're not going to get that with one of these standard PTO mounted hydraulic pumps. You're going to have to step it up. You've got to increase your PTO speed so that you can get the RPMs that you need to run a high pressure gear pump so if you take a look down here what we've done this box right here mounts onto your pto shaft this takes your pto rpms from 540 to about 1500 rpms and that's mounted to a hydraulic gear pump which then has your flow rate somewhere around uh, 20 gallons per minute i think this one is actually uh, will go about maximum of about 32 gallons per minute so when it's you know an optimal RPMs you're getting the the pressure and the flow that you need for your snowblower but here's the deal this here in the United States this contraption is made by a company called cross and that that's gonna run you about two thousand dollars if you can get a company to sell it to you for less, you might be able to get it for twelve to fourteen hundred dollars. This setup right here, if you go to a company out of England called FlowFit, FlowFit Online, they can sell you that whole configuration there for about eight hundred. I actually ordered the gear pump from a company on eBay. For about $175 and I got the, the pump to match it from a company there in England flow fit online so saving myself about a thousand dollars when it was all said and done 
So look into that, FlowFit Online. I am endorsing them, great company. They had the parts that I ordered in less than a week shipped from England. I've waited longer than that for parts shipped in the United States. Uh, the rest of our fittings and everything, you've got over here, uh, you've got your pressure relief valve. This is at about 2,500 PSI and it pops off and goes into uh, the tank over here if your pressures get too high. So it's coming coming out of here, going back into the tank. Uh, this, this hose right here is a low pressure line that's feeding the pump. Then you come out over here, and this is our high pressure line coming out of the pump. And it's going up into our pressure relief. And then we've got our gauges here to show what our pressures are. And it's idling, we're sitting maybe at about 500. At RPMs that we're at, we're looking at maybe about 1500 to 2000, and that's without a low, uh, resistance. So when we're pushing snow, our pressures are kind of probably be in the 2000 to 3000 range. So then let's follow this so that you kind of understand, you gotta run some hoses. So we went, we went with just high pressure, uh, flexible hoses, and when we added our, uh, guards on them so that these will be resistant to you know dragging in the dirt bumping up against our tractor tire if they fall running over them but these these are uh, for over 4,000 psi and these are three quarter inch hoses which you need you need three quarter three quarter inch hoses to run that snow blower so we we're coming out of the coming out going up to the front We've got our hoses and we'll follow these up here. These are run under our tractor. We come up here and we've got our, uh, our skid steer quick connects. I need to kind of fasten them up, but we to, to, the, to the loader arms here. We've obviously got our skid steer quick connect on our Vernix snow blower. I want y'all to see this snow blower because this snow blower is amazing. Look at this. I mean these these paddles are huge. I mean they're 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 bigger than my hand. It's feeding six feet worth of snow into our second stage here, which is spinning super fast. Uh, and hopefully that's going to blow some snow. And then obviously this is hydraulic controlled with solenoid actuators that control the rotation of it. I mean, this, this, this is a super overbuilt snowblower. You come up here in the tractor, you've got your controller with the magnet, and you can, you can take this controller and mount it wherever you want, but uh, it plugs into the cigarette lighter up here in the tractor or wherever. You can hot wire it into the tractor however you want, but then this controls the, the uh, chute and the rotation of your chute and uh, that's that's basically it uh, of course on you know to, to turn this on you got to turn your PTO on so you have to you know be, be real careful before, just like all tractor implements that operate on your PTO make sure that you're clear I mean that is a very dangerous snowblower but once you turn it on boy it's it's flying and we'll put a video in here of it on and then We'll come back in the winter and see uh, how it's doing with the snow. But uh, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to post them down below and I'll get back with you and hopefully give you some advice on how to make your own PTO power unit. Have a good day.